Who else picked Blastoise in their first playthrough of Pokemon Red and Blue? Well, I didn't. Charizard's stand for life. But for real, it's a solid mon, and Generation 8 gave it a new toy in Shell Smash, making it a potent sweeper, or so we thought. Until now, I'm going to reveal to you the secret sauce to making Blastoise the sweeper we all want it to be. So you know how Blastoise normally runs special offense with Shell Smash and gets walled by Blissey, Clodzire, and Clefables, yeah? Well, not anymore. We go the opposite way with a physical set, destroying those three easily. With access to its new move, Wave Crash, with Terra Ground Earthquake. Nah, nothing stopping that. Anyway, our first battle with Blastoise is against Pat from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord, and well, it's a solid game and Blastoise really shines. So without further ado, I present to you the Blastoise video. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Pat. So they're going to lead off with Klefki, as I led off with my Great Tusk, because I was kind of expecting the Klefki. I didn't want it to Thunderwave anything. Um, they probably go for a Spikes or something, so I'm going to go for a Stealth Rocks right off the bat. Um, just to get them up. They actually go for a Reflect, which is interesting. So screens are getting up. Which is really cool. Not really. Um, stealth rocks do come through. So what I'm going to do here is expecting a light screen. I'm going to go for a knockoff so that the next time he sets up screens, if he does get a chance to, it can't um, have them up as long as it wants to. Because I'm, I'm assuming the light clay. I'm assuming the light clay at this point. So let's go for a knockoff. No damage, obviously. But we do get rid of the light clay, which is nice. Uh, now we 100% go for a earthquake here. Even if they go into Braviary, I'm not too fussed. They withdraw? Are they going to go Braviary? They could. Sarah. Who's Sarah? Is that the Braviary? The Veluza. Veluza is one of them Pokemon that I haven't seen in ages as well. Interesting. And we go for an EQ though. That's going to still do some decent damage even through Reflect. Yeah, a little bit of decent damage. Now, I can't have this thing setting up on me with its uh, fillet away. Um, they go for an Aqua Cutter. And I can take that like no problem. We're, we're a defensive Great Tusk. We can take that no problem. We knock off. We get rid of whatever item they've got. They've got a Citrus Berry. So they are a Filet Away set. Now I'm going to go for an Earthquake just in case they switch out. But they actually go for a Recover. Which is fine. So they have Recover and Aqua Cutter. And probably Filet Away and then Psychic Fangs. Or Psycho Cuts. I don't know. I'm not bothered because we're, getting, we're, we're, we're wasting screens times here. So I'm just going to keep going for an Earthquake. I don't see any reason not to. They go for another Recover. Look, your screen's going to disappear any time now. Earthquake comes through. If we get a crit, that'd be funny. No, we don't get a crit. Um, let's go for... Let's go for a rapid spin. Get our speed up. They go for an aqua cutter again. Obviously, it's not going to do much damage to us. Um, they are not getting any rocky helmet chip. So I'm guessing they're protective pads. Which is really... No, they, no we knocked off their citrus berry. So how are they How are they using aqua cutter and not getting rocky helmet chip? Is there something I'm not seeing here? Let's go for an earthquake anyway. We are speeding now thanks to the rapid spin, so we can now prior you know I'll, I'll do him. And um, they go for another aqua cutter, nearly takes us out. And um, the team's reflect wears off, which is great. We now go straight for I went for a stealth rocks again. I'm a noob. I thought for some reason I had it in my mind that knockoff was right below earthquake, so I just went to it. That's annoying. So what do we do here? The live screen wears off. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my own Nine Tails and sell my uh, Aurora Veil for Blastoise to come in. I think that's what I'm going to do. So snow begins to fall. We go for an Aurora Veil here 100% of the time just to get it up. And they've stayed in, so I'm guessing they're just sacking this thing off now. They go for a Recover. Okay, so that's fine. The light screen does wear off this turn, or is it already wore off? I think it's already wore off. Uh, we could have took this thing out with Great Tusk. That's so annoying. Let's go for a freeze dry anyway. And um, just to take it out. Should KO it here. It does. The loser goes down. The loser is the loser. As a critical hit claims its soul. So the loser goes down. I'm looking at this matchup and I'm thinking, oh, all right, all right, all right. Not a bad matchup. Not a bad matchup. So Jingle comes in, the keys. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Let's go for an encore. Because they're going to go for a Thunder Wave. Oh, they go for a Thunder Wave. I was going to say they're going to go for a Reflect. Or a Light Screen. But they go for a Thunder Wave, which is great. Um, so Thunder Wave paralyzes us. We couldn't move because we're fully paralyzed. Now they go for a Screen, right? So we go for an Encore again. They go for a Light Screen. That's great. That's just great. We go for an Encore. Locking them into Light Screen. They can't get up with a Reflect just yet. We go Blastoise. We 100% go Blastoise here. They withdraw. So they, they withdraw because they don't want to deal with all that. 
And they're going to go into Tony, which is going to be the Tiger, right? The Incineroar. Yeah, the Tony the Incineroar comes in. Gets the Intimidate off on Ninetales. We end up going into Blastoise. And we just go for a Shell Smash here. We always go for a Shell Smash here. The Aurora Veil's up. We can take hits for days. The Snow is going to stop. We go for a Shell Smash. We Shell Smash. They probably switch into Klefki to try and paralyze us, to be fair. We go for a Shell Smash. They do stay in. Blastoise can take a knockoff, though. Unless they go for a Parting Shot. They might do, to be fair. Parting Shot would make sense. I don't know what set this Incineroar is, though. So let's see. They go for a Drain Punch. That does no damage because of the Aurora Veil. Brilliant. So now what do we do? Do we go for a Wave Crash? They got Light Screen up. They didn't get Reflect up. I'm going to go for a Wave Crash. I don't see any reason not to. So Wave Crash comes through. Down goes Tony the Tiger. Absolutely amazing. So if they go Klefki now, they probably try and Thunder Wave us before they reflect. They probably Thunder Wave before reflect. Yeah, Jingle comes in once again. They probably Thunder Wave before they reflect. So we're going to Terra Ground Earthquake. We can't be Thunder Waved if we're a ground type. Let's go for the Terra Ground Earthquake. Like so. They have seen we're physical, so they might expect the Earthquake, but they might not expect the Terra Ground. So hopefully they go for a Thunder Wave here and not reflect. Hopefully. I think paralyzing the fast Blastoise is probably the priority, though. Yeah, they're trying to Thunder Wave me. Nice! Come on, Blastoise! Come on, Blastoise! Get that Earthquake off! Incineroar's dead. No more Intimidate. This thing's dead. No more Reflect or Thunder Waves. It's just terror that we have to worry about. Ringo comes in. What's that? The Flapple. Get some Stealth Frog Chip. So, this is a predicament for me. Because they're going to expect the Ice Spinner, right? Or Ice type move. So, they go for a Terra Steel, right? Or Terra Poison. So, do we go for an Earthquake? Or is that too obvious? Maybe the, maybe the best play is the obvious play. Let's go for an Ice Spinner. Yes! It was the best play! Yes! I'm so glad I didn't go for an Earthquake there. So glad I didn't go for an Earthquake there. Thank you. Thank you. Person in the comments who told me sometimes the best play is the obvious play. That's some wise words right there. Sometimes the best play is the op is the is the proper wait what? Sometimes the best play is the wrong play. I don't know. Obvious play, that's the one. Great Tusk comes in. This thing's gonna tear a water all over me and ruin my day, right? Let's go for a wave crash and find out. They don't terror. They must not have a terror that's suitable. They cleanly go down to the great the the wave crash. Nicely done, Blastoise. And no no Rocky Helmet. We got Citrus Berry anyway, so we're fine. Citrus Berry, are we Rocky Helmet? Valiant comes in. That's the Braviary. That's the Braviary coming in. We go for a Wave Crash 100% of the time here. Just to finish it off with a bang. Finish it off with a bang. Blastoise wins us the game. Critical hit didn't matter. Do I don't care. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Blastoise wins us the game. And that is a GG to Pat over there. GG Pat. What a game. Blastoise came through. Excellent demonstration of its power for sure. The next game is against Nitrogen Loves from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord. And let's just say this battle is one for the books. And the battle begins. Good luck out for Nitrogen Loves. So they're going to lead off with Vivian, the Hatterene, as I led off with my Ninetales. I just figured Ninetales works really well here. Um, Ninetales will be useful for getting rid of that Ogre Palm, which would be key for getting Blastoise to do anything in this game. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go straight for the Aurora Veil. Don't see any reason not to. And they don't have a Defogger, they have a Rapid Spinner, so Aurora Veil should be here to near enough stay. Um, as they go for a Calm Mind, that's unfortunate. So I can't Encore this thing either, which is a problem. Um, so if I can't Encore it, what's the best thing for me to do? I'd say probably Heatran. Heatran walls this thing to hell and back. So we're going to Heatran, it, it, especially with the Aurora Veil up. This Hatterene cannot touch us unless it's Terra Ground. With Terra Blast. Um, so they go for a Nuzzle. Which is fine. That's going to do no damage. Paralyzes us though. Which is unfortunate. And uh, we're going to pop our leftovers. And get our health all the way back up to full. Which is fantastic. So. So. We go straight for a Flash Cannon here right? Yeah let's go for a Flash Cannon. Calm Mind. They're going to Calm Mind again. That's fine. Calm Minding is fine. 
Um, we do have the physically offensive Blastoise in the back, which we can use to wave crash this thing. So we go for a flash cannon. That's going to do a nice bit of damage to them. Um, as they're actually going to pop that they've got leftovers. Okay, so that's fine. Leftovers is fine. Leftovers is fine. Let's go for a flash cannon once again. We'll just keep flash cannon this thing in the face to go for a draining kiss. And it does nothing. And I think they've realized at this point that there is no point staying in. We go for a flash cannon. And that's going to do a lot of damage to Vivian, I'm afraid. To the point where, like I said, there's no point staying in. You can't do anything to this Heatran. You can calm mind all you want. It's not going to work out. Definitely not going to work out for you. So knowing they're probably going to switch into the Ogre Pond right now, I'm tempted to go for a Lava Plume. I think I will. I think at this point they do switch out the Hattery and they want to preserve its life a bit. They withdraw Vivian, like I thought. Are they going to go Ogre Pond? Kova. Who's Kova? Ogre Pond. Nice. So if we get the burn here, that'll be clutch. We've got a nice Lava Plume off. No burn. The snow has stopped, but we have got the Aurora Veil up still, so that's fine. Um, now we go into Hydrapple all the time here. Hydrapple all the time. So we withdraw. And the, the, the stars are aligning for Blastoise right now because this Ogapon being weakened is key. So we go into Hydrapple. They go for an Ivy Cudgel, which is going to do absolutely no through Aurora Veil. Yeah, nothing. No damage. We now go for a Fickle Beam or a Giga Drain. I'm leaning towards the Fickle Beam um, just in case they bring the Dragonite in. But the Hatterene is probably the one that's coming in, right? So I, I think we go for a Giga Drain here. They actually go for a play rough, which is still going to do notes. As we go for that Giga Drain, nearly take them out and get some health back, which is amazing. So um, we're, we're, we're looking pretty good with Hydrapple right now. We still got one more turn of Aurora Veil. So while we're here, let's go for... I think I don't think they go Hattery in this turn. I think they go Dragonite expecting another Giga Drain. So I'm going to go for a Fickle Beam here. They actually stay in still. Interesting. So they stay in for a third one. We go for a Fickle Beam. That's going to take them right out. So that's great. Absolutely great. Rakshas, so the Rampaging comes in. That's the Cerule Edge. This thing's obviously a threat. We know this is a threat. Um, do we Earth Power? Probably. I don't want it to set up on me, so I kind of want to go for the Earth Power. So I am going to go for the Earth Power. They go for a Bulk Up. They're a Bulk Up Cerule Edge. Can they take an Earth Power from a Hydrapple, though? That's the real question. And are they Weakness Policy? That is another question. They can take an Earth Power just fine. So they're clearly specially defensive with Bulk Up. Which is threatening in its own right, to be fair. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and assume they're going to probably bit a Blade us. So I want to go into Heatran or something else. I'm going to go into the Great Tusk because I just want to see what this Cerule Edge is all about. If they've got Bulk Up, they probably have Bitter Blade and Poltergeist. Um, they are going to Terror. What type are they going to Terror into? To take an Earth Power from Hydrapple. Bug? Bug. Okay, cool. I predicted right. Nice. I actually I guessed that right somehow. Anyway, we get the Terror Bug. We went into our um, Great Tusk, which is fine. And this thing, I want to knock off its item. Because it's getting that residual recovery every turn from the leftovers. And it's kind of doing my head in a little bit. So, I'm going to go for a knockoff real quick. They go for a Poltergeist. They're going for the attack now. They attack us with our Rocky Helmet, which is fine. Does nearly half. We go for a knockoff. And that's going to do no damage. But it does get the leftovers gone off them. So now, if we know they're going to go for a Poltergeist, we should switch out into... We haven't got a switch in. Um... I guess we just set up Stealth Rocks while we can. Because they're going to go for another Poltergeist. And then they'll probably go for a Shadow Sneak to finish us off the next turn. Um, because they don't want to miss the Poltergeist. Um, which is fine because they'll get us some Rocky Helmet Chip. But it doesn't look like they've got Hazards on their team. So I don't mind Great Tusk going down here. So let's go for the knockoff once again just in case. They go for a bit of Blade just to get some health back. But to be honest with you, it's going to do more damage to you than it would have done. Um, than you're going to recover because of the Rocky Helmet. So... um. That's great. Rocky Helmet doing its thing. Tuscany goes down. So what do we do here? Um, do we go into... Because they're flash fire. They're not weak armor. They're at plus two. We kind of have to go Yam Mega, right? Yeah, I'm going to go Yam Mega because it looks like they've got bit of Blade, Poltergeist, Bulk Up, and then maybe Shadow Sneak. Um, so let's go for a Protect first and foremost to get our speed boost. There we go. Protect comes through. Yamega actually looks pretty good here. 
other than that Dragonite. They go for the Bitter Blade, which is obviously not going to KO us, and um, because it doesn't connect because of the Protect. We get the Speed Boost. Now we outspeed, we go for an Air Slash, and that should finish them off. Should finish them off from here. It does. So the Cerule Edge goes down. Yanmega takes care of that. And they've already terrored, so we don't have to worry about Terra Normal Dragonite when we go for an Ice Spinner on it. We got the Stealth Rocks up, so if they're not Heavy Duty Boots, they're not going to have the Multi Scale. Crusade comes in. Is that the King Gambit? Dragonite. Dragonite's a good one. Dragonite is a good one. Um, they're probably going to go for their uh, Dragon Dance stuff here. So I'm going to Air Slash them in the face. Just to get rid of it. They go for an extreme speed. That's going to do a lot of damage. But not quite enough to warrant me worrying. And we go for the air slash to break the multi-scale. And then we're going to get another speed boost. We're looking pretty good right now with Yan Mega. So I'm going to keep going for air slashes. They go for another extreme speed. That's fine. We go for another air slash. Bit of damage. Great. Absolutely fantastic. So we're in prime position right now. So let's go for a... Um, do we switch out? No, we don't. We let Yamega go down here. Yamega did good this game. Yamega did good. They go for an extreme speed takers out. That's fine. Now, we go Blastoise. We go Blastoise because they might Dragon Dance on us. But we go Blastoise, Shell Shocker. And they might go Hatterene. They might go King Gambit. Let's go for a Shell Smash and find out. Shell Smash comes through. Setting up in the face of a Dragonite is ballsy, but I think we can do this. I really think we can do this. Um, so let's go for it. The spe attacks, but yeah, all, all going to raise boost in the stats and all that. And then they go for a dragon dance. So we actually still outspeed them here, because we're plus two and they're plus one, and we're around the similar speed stat. Um, so now we go for a ice spinner to take this thing out. Extreme speed comes through. It's going to do over half, which is unfortunate. We do have a citrus berry though, which is fine. That's going to pop us back up to a bit more health. Ice Spinner comes through. Takes out the Dragonite, which is amazing. And Crusade goes down. Crusade goes down. Vexness, the early riser, comes in. The King Gambit. This is where the problems begin. This is where the problems begin. Um, because King Gambit is a tough one to break, really. Um, we do have to kind of switch out here. So I'm going to go into my Alolan Ninetales. We can still do something with Blastoise against this King Gambit. We can Terra Ground uh, Earthquake it after we get the Aurora Veil up. So we'll go into Ninetales real quick. Get the Snow up, which is going to boost our defense anyway. They go for a Sucker Punch, and obviously it's going to fail. Um, so that's fine. Uh, we could have probably stayed and gone for a Shell Smash there. Tried to play the Sucker Punch mind games, but I don't think it's worth it. So I'm going to go for the Aurora Veil again. Like so. They probably go three for an Iron Head or a Swords Dance. If they go for Swords Dance, we're going to Encore it. Swords Dance. There we go. So they go for the Swords Dance. Which is great. So that means Blastoise can come through here. So we Encore this thing into Oblivion right now. Get Encored into Sword Dance. There we go. That's what we like to see. That's what we like to see. However, we do have to be careful because this King Gambit is now at plus four. Um, so we have to be really careful. I'm going to go into Blastoise and I'm going to Terra Ground um, Earthquake in the face. I think that is the way to go. Because Encore lasts like two to three turns, I think. They go for another Sword Dance. They're now at plus six or whatever it was. I've lost track. They're at plus ten. Um, we go for the Terra Ground Earthquake right now to try and get the KO on this thing. They withdraw... What are they going to go into? Are they going to go into the Great Tusk? Vivian comes in. Vivian's a fine one. Get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is great. We go for the Terra Ground, and then we just go straight for an Earthquake, pretty much. Um, I should have probably figured they would switch King Gambit out there, but uh, to save it for later. But um, I didn't. <laughs> so it is what it is. At the end of the day, it is what it is. Uh, we go for the EQ. That's definitely going to KO the Hatterene from here. So Blastoise gets another KO, which is fantastic. So it's got the Dragonite. It's got the Hatterene. And also, Hot Dog comes in. The Great Tusk, which is fine. Great Tusk, uh, Pointing Stone is going to dig into it and all that stuff. Uh, we 100 percent go for a Wave Crash here. Just to get the damage off. They go for an Ice Spinner, though. That's going to take us out, unfortunately. Never mind. No, it doesn't. Aurora Veil come through. We go for a Wave Crash. And that's going to cleanly take out the hot dog. Great Tusk went down to a wave crash. Nice. Blastoise 
Physical Blastoise, do not sleep on Physical Blastoise. All right? Granted, it's going down to recoil right now, but do not sleep on Physical Blastoise. It will destroy your life. They're going to go back into the King Gambit, which is fine. They can't Terror, so we can safely go for an Earth Power here. We've got the Aurora Veil up, so we're all golden. They have to go for a Swords Dance here, I think. To get the Supreme Overlord. We go for an Earth Power 100% of the time here. They go for a Kauto Cleave. They don't Swords Dance. That's going to do nothing. As uh, we go for the Earth Power and cleanly take them out in one massive critical hit. And that is going to be the game. So GG Nitrogen loves. That was a fun one. That was the fun, that was a fun one. I enjoyed that one. Blastoise really got to shine in that one as well, which is great. Told you, didn't I? Brilliant game. GG Nitrogen loves. The next game is against Envious Goon from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord again. And it's an absolutely astounding game, not gonna lie. Hope you all enjoy. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Envy. So they're gonna lead off with Magnazone, as I predicted, as I led off with my Heatran. So I figured, looking at the team, I was like, they're not gonna lead with Swampert, because we probably lead Ninetales. They've got three Steel types, all of which can handle Ninetales pretty well. So I figured they must do this. So I get a free Lava Plume off on whatever I want right now, which is amazing. They withdraw the Magnazone. What are we gonna get a Lava Plume on? Probably their Heatran, right? Uh, they won't go Heatran because we could Earth Power that Magnezone. That's a good point. They go Corbin. I expecting the Earth Power, which is fine. And um, we went for the Lava Plume, which is great and all. That's going to set thing, set the stage for Blastoise later, having this thing weakened. So now we go for a Taunt so they can't Roost. Taunt comes through. No Roosting for you, I'm afraid. I could have just taken out of a Lava Plume there. They do try and Roost, though. That's great. So now, they probably want to uh, switch out, right, into their own Heatran. Um, I am concerned about that possibility, but I don't mind giving them Flash Fire because we have a switch in. So, I don't mind giving them Flash Fire. So, I'm going to go straight for the Lava Plume here. They do withdraw the Corviknight. To be fair, we should have Lava Plume the first time. They go into Swampert expecting maybe an Earth Power or something. Else. They're probably expecting a Lava Plume. Um, so, Lava Plume comes through. We might get the Burn, which would be nice. Very clutch if we do. We do get it. That's clutch. Clutch burn on the Swampert. Nice to see it. Heatron's just kind of 1v1ing right now. Um, but this is a particular matchup I don't want to be in because even burned, I'm pretty confident Swampert's Earthquake will still take us out. So with that being said, let's switch on out. Um, do I want to go into... Ooh, Blastoise could be really good right now. It, it depends on that hit on top though. It really depends on that hit on top. I think I'll go Hydrapple for now. I'll play it safe. I'll go Hydrapple. There we go. We withdraw. We go Hydrapple. They probably go for a flip turn, which is fine. Um, they probably flip turn into, if I had to guess, either Heatran or the Corviknight. They do flip turn, which is going to do no damage thanks to that burn. Swampert being burned and Corviknight being weakened is epic, by the way. They probably go Corviknight now, actually, to try and um, roost off the damage. They go Magnezone. We always go Heatran here, right? I think we go Heatran, and we always go Heatran here. Because they have a Terra Ice, Terra Blast, or the Flash Cannon. Unless they're Terra Ground. They wouldn't be Terra Ground, though, surely not. Steel Beam. I mean, that would have probably not taken out um, Hydrapple because of the Assault Vest, but we get some mad recoil on the Magnezone, which is amazing. Now, since I know we outspeed the Corviknight, I can just go for Earth Power, expecting their Heatran to come in. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. They withdraw the Magnezone. Are they going to go into their Heatran? Corviknight. So that's fine. Corviknight can come in. We outspeed the Corviknight. Corviknight wants to come in and do its thing. We just um, outspeed and go for a Lava Plume. Earth Power comes through. Now, even if they go into Heatran here, what's Flash Fire going to do to them to benefit them for the Heatran matchup? Probably not a lot, right? I don't mind. So let's go for the Lava Plume. I don't mind if they Flash Fire. They do withdraw. Are they going to go the Heatran now? Or are they going to go for the, for the Swampert? Swampert makes sense. So we get some chip damage on the Swampert, which is valuable. Very valuable. We go for the Lava Plume. That's going to get the damage off on the Swampert, which is great. Now, here's the predicament. Do they go for a Stealth Rocks here? I think they go for a Flip Turn. So I might try and punish the Flip Turn by going for a um, Great Tusk Switch because we've got the Rocky Helmet. I think that might be a good option for us. Um, if, we can, if we can weaken this one per any, any amount, it'd be great. I'm going to go Ninetales instead to get the Aurora Veil up. We need that for Blastoise. 
Blastoise could really run through this team, though, if we um, let it get going. We just need them to Terra so that we don't get Surprise Terrored on. And they do go for a Stealth Rocks, which is, is fine. It's, it's not the end of the world. We can Rapid Spin those away with Great Tusk. They don't have a Ghost type after all. Um, and now we get a free Aurora Veil on the Swampert. Or we can go for a Freeze Dry, one of the two. They might flip turn expecting us to go for Aurora Veil, so it might be worth uh, freeze drying, but I kind of want to save this thing, you know? Um, for Blastoise to pick off later. So let's go for an Aurora Veil. That's going to benefit us more. They do stay in. Magnezone comes through. That's fine. I, I can handle Magnezone, no problem. So, what do we do here? Do we go Heatran again, or do we go into the Hydrapple again? Because they probably Volt Switch, right? I'd say we can just go into Heatran. We just need a good opportunity to get Blastoise in, really. That's all we really need. We need them to Terror as well. We need them to Terror of, so of some kind. So they're going to go for a Volt Switch on the Heatran, which is fine. If they're Analytic, that's going to sting a little bit, but not too much because of the Aurora Veil. And then what are they going to go into now? Are they going to go back into Swampert? Yeah, Swampert comes in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go Great Tusk. And um, we're going to go Great Tusk just to... Um, Get rid of the Stealth Rocks for a start. And also to bait in that Corviknight. Because Corviknight is the Pokemon we're going to set up on with the uh, Swampert, I think. Because it'll go for a Roost, expecting us to go for a Shell Smash. And then we go for another Shell Smash after that. Right? So we go Great Tusk here. Always go Great Tusk here. There we go. Great Tusk comes through. Like so. Point of stones do dig in. We're going to rapid spin those away, though. They go for an ice punch. It's not going to do any damage to us through Aurora Veil and Burn. I mean, they could freeze us, but they haven't, luckily. As they are going to get that leftovers recovery now, which is great. We go for a rapid spin. They do withdraw. They haven't got a ghost type, so I'm wondering what they're going to go into here. Hit them on top. Let's see if they're Intimidate or not. If they're Intimidate, hit them on top. We know this is more of a defensive build. They are Intimidate, which is great. We go for a rapid spin. That's going to do no damage, but you know what? Damage nonetheless. They can't really do anything to us. And they probably come into this thing expecting us to go for a Stealth Rocks, which we can't do because there's a hit on top on the field. It'll just rapid spin them away straight away. So we can't really do anything with that. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to I'm going to knock off first and foremost. Knock off's going to be great because it's going to get rid of that leftovers recovery every turn for it. Um, especially if it's going to try and do some stuff. So they go for a triple axle, which is going to do absolutely nothing. And it's going to hurt them three times with a Rocky Helmet. There we go, Rocky Helmet. And they've got to hope they don't hit a third time. They do hit a third time, which is fine. Rocky Helmet's going to come through. So we need to get rid of the hit on top for the Blastoise. That's what we need to do. So now we go for an Earthquake 100% of the time here. They withdraw the hit on top. Are they going to go Corviknight? Corviknight makes sense. Yeah, Corviknight comes in. Absolutely fine by me. Um, this thing's probably Rocky Helmet if I had to guess. We go for an Earthquake. They probably go for a Roost here. So I'm going to use this opportunity to get um, Blastoise in. I want to anyway. Blastoise could really put some work in. I'm going to go Blastoise now. Expecting them to go for a Roost. And I'm going to use this opportunity to go for a um, Shell Smash. We don't know what Terrors they've got on the team. They go for the Roost, which is fine. They might go for another Roost. So we, we go for a Shell Smash here anyway. Shell Smash comes through. There we go. Shell Smash is here. We get that defense drop and those stat boosts, which is amazing. They go for another Roost to get up to full. That's fine. You go for that Roost to get up to full. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm... I'm... I'm <laughs> the Aurora Veil wears off. That's great. They haven't got priority. I'm, I might get greedy here. I might greedily Shell Smash again. We Shell Smash again. And what are they going to do? Are they going to U-turn? Are they going to U-turn here? I think we live an attack from them. We definitely live an attack from them. So let's uh, see what they do here. So um, they go for a U-turn, which is fine. That's going to do a nice bit of chip damage to us. Nothing too heavy. Now what do they do? Because we're at plus four in attack, special attack, and speed. In comes Grace. Who's Grace? Sylveon. I don't think Sylveon takes this. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to Terra Ground Earthquake right now. I'm going to Terra Ground Earthquake. There's no way this Sylveon takes it. If it's specially defensive, and they're expecting it to live because we're usually special attackers, 
then yeah. But with Terra Ground, we are physical Blastoise. Okay, because Blastoise got granted the move Wave Crash this generation. We go for an EQ. Boosted by Terra. At plus four. Nah. Nah. Sylveon ain't taking that. No, 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 no way. No way, Jose. Sylveon ain't taking that. That's, that's no. It's just not going to happen. Hit him on top comes in. That's, that's a good switch. Gets the Intimidate off and all that. Um, we probably expect a Corviknight switch here. They're probably going to try and w work around with the uh, hit on top. Try and lower our attack a bit. So we go for a wave crash here all the time. They do withdraw the hit on top. They're going to go Corviknight, right? They're going to bait the um, Earthquake going Corviknight. Swampert. Swampert works as well. We're going to get some mad recoil. I went for this expecting the Corviknight though. But it's fine. This, this works just as well. This works just as well. We're going to lower it, lower it HP, but we do have the, the Citrus Berry. There we go. We're going to bite into a Citrus Berry. Nom, nom, nom. Get some health back, which is great. And then add some longevity to us. Hit on top comes back in. Again, what are they switching here? They can go Corviknight on a Wave Crash. They can't go Magna Zone. They can't go Heatran. We Wave Crash 100% here. They withdraw the Hit on top again. They're Intimidate spamming, which is fine. Corviknight comes in. Can Corviknight take a plus two Wave Crash? Probably can take one. And if the Rocky Helmet is going to really do some damage to us. Let's go for the Wave Crash. Yeah, it's a 2 KO at least. Rocky Helmet is there. So is the Recoil. We definitely go for a Wave Crash again though. We want to take out this Corviknight. The point of the Blastoise is to put, put holes in the team. That's, that's for sure. Wave Crash comes through. They do stay in. And we lose Blastoise to Recoil and uh, Rocky Helmet, unfortunately. So Corviknight goes down, which is great. Having that thing out of the way is amazing. We get damaged by the Recoil, and that's going to knock out poor Blastoise. So Blastoise took out three of their big hitters, the Swampert, the Corviknight, and the Sylveon. So now they have a Hitmon on top that's on Death's Door, Magnezone, which is weakened, and a Heatran. I think we can do this. I really think we can do this. I think we can do this with Hydrapple. To be honest with you. So we'll go into head game. Heatran comes in. Fine. They haven't terrored yet. So that's good to keep in mind. Let's go for an earth power anyway. They go for an earth power of their own. Expecting us to switch maybe. I'm a salt vest. I wasn't going to switch out. As earth power cleanly KOs that Heatran right there. Which is fantastic. So even though Blastoise punched holes in the teams. It looks like it's down to Hydrapple to save the day. Hit him on top does come in. We know this thing has triple axle, but it's not stabbed, so we should probably be able to take it. It's just a matter of whether we want to take it or not. I don't think we do. I think I'm going to go into Great Tusk expecting the triple axle here. There we go. We withdraw the Hydrapple. We go into our Great Tusk to take the triple axle because they're going to get Rocky Helmet Chip. So they actually Terrastalize. Are they going to go Terra Ice? Terra Ice would make sense. Terra Fighting. So they're going Terra Fighting here, which is fine. I don't mind Terra Fighting. They're probably going to go for a close combat if that's the case. Yeah, they go for a close combat. That's not going to take out Great Tusk, I don't think. No, it doesn't. We are defensive Great Tusk, and we don't care about no hit on tops. As there's the Rocky Helmet chips. And the next hit they go for is going to be able, is going to take him out. So we go for an Earthquake here 100% of the time. They withdraw the hit on top into the Magna Zone. To try and get an, an Intimidate off on the Great Tusk again, I'm guessing. But no, 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 no. We go for an Earthquake here 100% of the time. That Magna Zone is dead. That Magna Zone is dead. I can't believe Blastoise popped some holes in this team, though. Like, the key players, if the Corviknight was around, Great Tusk would not be able to do this. Hit him on top comes in now. He gets the Intimidate off, which is fine. It's got his defenses back as well. But I don't think it takes an Earthquake anyway. So we go for an Earthquake 100% of the time here. They go for a Bullet Punch, which is not going to KO us, unfortunately. It's not even going to come close. As Rocky Helmet does manage to finish them off, and Hitmon on top is going to go down. That's going to be the game. So GG Envy, that was a fun one. I'm so glad we got Blastoise to pop off in that one. I feel like I've had a lot. Like, this is the second battle I've had with Blastoise. Um, and I feel like I've got really, you know, Blastoise is such an easy Pokemon to pull off.
What a nail biter. I love that game for real. GG Envy. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, why not consider subscribing to stay up to date on all my videos? And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.